TheHamptons.com is here at the Maidstone with Dennis Lynch, whose film The King of the Hamptons is premiering at the film festival this year. Dennis, how much fun did you have making this film in the Hamptons? <laughs> more, more fun than I'm allowed to say on your camera. Okay, yeah. what was the most favorite part of the film? Uh, going out on the lobsterman's fishing, fishing boat for two days. Really? Yeah, because I felt like a, a potato chip in a pool of acid. Wow. Yeah, because if you fall off, you're dead. Do you do water well? Is lobster fishing a thing you normally do? Or are you I've never fisherman? done it before. Billy Joel told me to go do it. Billy Joel told Billy you to Joel, do it. I okay. asked Billy Joel what song, if there were any, that he wrote about the Hamptons, and it was the Downey Easter Alexa. And then he said, you should go on a fishing boat. So when Billy Joel tells you to go on a fishing boat, you go on a fishing boat. Of course you do. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever do it again? If I'm lucky enough. Because let me tell you, that fishing boat was the nail in the coffin for me to completely change my entire life. And that's a pretty bold statement. So what are you going to do about your life different now than you did before you went on the boat? Well, the reason why I made this movie is because I hit what most people call is a midlife crisis. Okay. Um, but I didn't need to get a motorcycle or an earring or a tattoo or a 20-year-old girlfriend. I just needed to do something different with my life. And um, I had the big, huge house with the boat in the back and everything was going fine, but I was traveling into the city. I didn't like my career. So with a pregnant wife and mortgages and everything else, I just dropped it all and I came out here and I started shooting the film with Dan Rutina. Okay. And then after doing that for the entire I don't know, four or five months that it lasted, the, the fishing boat was one of the last things I did. Okay. And then uh, I went home and I said, hon, we're, uh, we're moving out to the Hamptons. So now I have a house that's on the highway, that's three bedrooms, one bath, and there's six of us living in there. Wow, now you said you needed a change of career. What was your career before you decided to do this? Well, I, I had two careers, really. I've always been an entrepreneur. Okay. So I had uh, one of the... Uh, I don't know if you want to call it the biggest, but one of the fastest growing companies on Long Island back in 2000 uh, called TechSmart. And I had 300 employees, and that went from, I should say, I had nine employees in a year, I had 300. Wow. Um, I had raised $35 million. John Scully from Apple was one of my partners. I won the uh, Long Island Entrepreneur of the Year Award. And after I gave the speech, and I heard myself speaking about how I had fallen in love with money. I walked off and I quit, and I gave it, I gave it all away. Millions gone. It's not often that someone can actually do that now. No. You have a family. How did your wife feel about that? We were scared. We were scared, but you know, there was, uh, there was no sense in being miserable and being unhappy if you had a whole bunch of money. So I just said I want to make a change. So I left that company and then I started another one and that didn't really work well because I was just doing the same thing over again. And then uh, I went to film school for about five weeks. I learned everything I needed to know about how to turn on the camera and tell in them the battery's weeks. working. Yeah, in five weeks. And then uh, I came out here with absolutely no idea what I was going to film. Knocked on Dan's, uh, Dan Rutino's door of Dan's Papers. Dan from Dan's Papers. And yeah. I said, uh, you want to make a, a movie? And he said, about what? And I said, I'm not really sure. Maybe you. Maybe, maybe me. Maybe the Hamptons. And what turned out to be King of the Hamptons, the movie, is how... I dealt with my midlife crisis to get through. He helped me, and at the same time, he was having problems with his paper, and he was getting or thinking about getting married for the fourth or fifth time. We could count anymore. And uh, we both, because I've been married to my high school sweetheart. That's so wonderful. I was I was kind of talking to him about love, and he's kind of talking to me about what you know how to do what you love, and together we both got to the finish line. So along the way, I've got Christy Brinkley and Alec Baldwin and Billy Joel and Ed Burns and Chevy Chase. And I mean, the, the, the lineup of people in the movie is unbelievable. But I think that the thing that people will really like the most or what they show to like the most about the celebrities in the movie is that I show them from a different perspective. I don't okay. show them what you see on Entertainment Tonight or when they're walking in through the, you know, the festival stuff. I show it at their homes uh, and how they, how they act as Hamptonites, you know, just like you and I. So uh, I don't want to ruin some of the things that take place in the movie, but I think that not only they're hilarious, but they're eye-opening in some ways. Which celebrity did you have the most fun with? Oh, boy. Talk about not getting yourself invited to the next party. Um, 
Okay, I'm, I'm assuming no. that you had a lot of fun with all of them, but who did you? Okay, I'll tell you what, let me go down. Let, let, let me go down the list real quick. Okay. Christy Brinkley is the most beautiful person I've ever seen, and she's a lot funnier than I expected her to be. Okay. Billy Joel was my idol because I grew up in Hicksville. He grew up in Hicksville. I got to meet my idol, and he's exactly as I thought he'd be, the coolest guy on earth. Uh, Ed Burns and I connected really well because we were the same age, and we're both independent filmmakers, so there was a connection. Alec Baldwin and I are both from Massapequa because I lived in Massapequa. That's where I came out. He was a, a little different than I expected in some ways, but again, you know, totally cool, helped me out. And uh, I don't know, Kim Cattrall had a, a boyfriend a lot younger than I thought. <laughs> than I thought. So that's it. I don't know. You know Mercedes Rule was Mercedes Rule was was like a sister. I mean, all these people. When I first started, I was extremely intimidated by the fact that they were a celebrity. And by the time the movie was over. They were just, so now you can they're say just beautiful, friends. talented people. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Christy's coming on Monday night, and I expect she'll probably sit somewhere near me, and I'll make a joke about something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So after the film festival, what do you see going on for you? Are you working on anything new that we need to know about? Absolutely. Um, in fact, I'm expecting a phone call right now about the new film I'm starting tomorrow. And what is that about? It is about the problem, or I should say the cost, the of illegal immigration in this country. So I'm traveling to Ecuador, I'm traveling to Mexico, I'm going to Arizona, Florida, Washington. Um, in fact, leave that rolling. President Obama. <laughs> yes, I'm going to have to call you back. I'm with the Hamptons.com. Later. So, uh, listen, I'm sorry for the impoliteness. Guy pisses me off all the time. But listen. It happens to the best of us. Listen, I, I have to go down and teach him, just like I had to teach Bush. They have to start listening to the common people who have common sense, right? Common sense isn't very common. It's not. So my film is going to be the common sense look at illegal immigration. Not let's just get them all out, not let's just let them all in. We have to fix it. So that's what I'm going to do. And then the second thing that I'll be doing, which launches on Monday night, um, when the movie launches, okay. is I'm starting what's called midlifenetwork.com. It's a blogging network for midlifers. Because I have met more people who say to me, I can't believe you did what you did at 40 years old. And I say, it's not all that hard. You could do it too. You just need somebody to show you how to do it. So it's meant for writers who want to be writers but don't know how to monetize what they know how to do because they're sitting home and they're a mom or they're a dad who's a fireman but really wants to be a writer. That's what we're doing. So I'm going to teach them how to do it, how to blog, how to make money from it. And this is what you need to have on camera. <laughs> if there is anybody out there between the ages of 35 to 45 to 55 to 65, it is never too late. I did this film with absolutely no money behind it. My whole expense was to go out to the bar and have a couple of steaks. That was it. I had a camera, I went around, I made sure I didn't make it look like a birthday video. And at the end of the day, after three years, I'm sitting here and you're interviewing me, another press are interviewing me, and I've had two packed out theaters, and I am no different than any one of you. I am with us, I'm the same. I am no different than any one of you. It could easily be anybody else and be me. The difference what I did is I stuck with it. You had the guts to I do had it. The, I had the, if I can say it, I had the balls to try it, and I had the balls to stay with it. Now, a siren probably means that somebody in East Hampton does not have the correct beach permit. I think I have Wouldn't to agree, agree with you on that. I mean, come on, you got the wrong beach permit. Or they're parts of the wrong spot. You are done. <laughs>